We adhere to all LAUSD policies. LAUSD follows CDC guidelines and will determine when and how school will reopen in the fall. We have no further information at this time. We will inform you of next steps as we receive them. Please feel free to check the LAUSD website for updated information. And there is the website. So before we go on, I just wanted to let you know that this is being recorded. And so if you do not want to be recorded, we do understand and you are more than welcome to stop your video, okay? So welcome to Ready, Set, Revere. Thank you all for being here. And so we'll have upcoming registration days. Unfortunately, we don't have the dates at this time. However, for each grade level, there'll typically be a separate date and we do have makeup days. So what do we do during our registration days? So students will receive class schedules, including class placements. They will receive textbooks, locker assignments, calendar planners, also PE clothes, uh, shirts are $10, shorts are $10, gym bags are $7, and sweatpants are 20. Now, obviously, um, right now, we don't know if we're coming back virtual or to a regular school setting. I would possibly say more so virtual. But once we do come back, these are all the things that students will be able to do during registration day, okay? School days. School starts at 7.55 a.m. That means that students are in their seat. If they are not in their seat, they are considered late. Parents can drop their children off in the West Driveway. The West Driveway closes at 7.55 a.m. Drop off and late arrivals usually occur what's called our circular driveway or our horseshoe driveway. And then when they enter, they will receive a tardy pass. So Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, students are dismissed at 3.02 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays, students are dismissed at 2.02 p.m. There are six Tuesdays a year for professional development where students will be dismissed at 1.32 p.m. Parents are definitely given reminders uh, via Schoology and also phone blasts. So you will be reminded, but just be aware that we do have different schedules here at Revere. So there is transportation for Revere. Students access or come to school via the Metro buses, uh, the big blue buses. There are, also, there are also carpools and you can contact Ms. Lori Vogel, who is our parent rep at lori.vogel at lausd.net. We also have parent sponsored buses and the contact for that is buses at paulreveremes.com. School buses are provided for those students who are in the magnet program and the PWT program. Those are programs you would have had to apply for. And those buses will uh, pick up students who live beyond five miles from the school. So at Revere, we do have an electronics policy, okay? So cell phones, iPads, smartwatches, Fitbits, or any electronics should be turned off and out of sight before entering school for the duration of the day. One second, I have to admit. Any item that is confiscated must be signed out by a parent or guardian and will be returned the last day of the week. So the last day of the week is Friday. If a student is on campus and they have their cell phone out, 
then that phone will be confiscated and parents will not be able to pick up the phone until that Friday. Now, if it is confiscated on Friday, then you can come pick it up that Friday. But that is our policy. It's a pretty strict policy, but the policy is meant to protect our students. So at Revere, we have several offices. The offices are the main office. In the main office, that's where you have the principal and you have our what's called SAA, which is our main administrative uh, support person. And there you will have general inquiries and appointments with teachers. That's where you will come in and you will sign in and you will receive your yellow badge. So that would be the main office. That's the office that is off the horseshoe driveway when you first uh, pull up into Paul Revere. Then we have our counseling office, which is a very busy office because that's where our counselors are. In the counseling office, the supports you can receive are things with such as help with grades, schedules, iPads, Schoology, and other social emotional concerns. Our counselors are there to support you with that. We have our attendance office, and that's where um, if your child is absent or if your child is tardy, that's where you will go is to our attendance office. Also in our attendance office, we have an administrator named Mr. Koretz, and he also supports with transportation. So if you have transportation issues, with Magnet or PWT, you can definitely go to the attendance office and speak with him. We have student services. Student services is dedicated in supporting school, uh, students with lost items, textbooks, and discipline. It is student services where the deans are. That's where our deans are located in student services. And then also we have our Magnet office. The magnet office uh, with Ms. Mavashov will deal with all concerns uh, for, for magnet students, okay? Superstars and parent volunteers. So if you wanna be a parent volunteer, Ms. Mavashov is your person. Schoology. Schoology is um, very important because Schoology is where you're going to access a lot of information. So Schoology is where you receive class updates and important school messages. Uh, Schoology is where you're going to check your child's grades and you're going to see upcoming assignments. On Schoology, you can also communicate with teachers via email. Schoology, you will also set up your account to receive notifications. So when um, the principal wants to tell everyone that there's no school on a certain day, it's a holiday. You can definitely set up your account to receive those notifications. Or if there's an emergency, emergency situation, Schoology is very important for all parents to set up and to, and to have and to actively follow and utilize. It's a great communication tool between you and your child's uh, teachers. Special education. So here at Paul Revere, we have several different programs for students with disabilities. So we have core programs and we have alternate curriculum programs. Our core programs consist of the resource specialist or RSP program. Students in, in the RSP program will have all general education classes and a possible learning center elective. We also have the special day class program. It's core curriculum for students with specific learning disabilities. They also have um, high functioning autism. These students have all core classes and they may have a social skills elective. Specific learning disabilities. Those students have all core classes in math, ELA, history, and science taught by special education teachers. And these are different teachers. They're not the same teacher. They go from class to class to class, just as our students who are being taught the core curriculum by the general ed teachers, okay? 
They also have general education electives as well. So next we have our alternate curriculum program. Uh, so we have our autism alternate curriculum program and our alternate curriculum programs are modified curriculum using unique. Unique is LAUSD's um, instructional program for our students. Our students on the alternate curriculum do have access to general education electives. And of course, with that comes modified assignments and grading to support them in accessing the elective course. And depending upon the student, they may have a modified physical education class. The second alternate curriculum class we have is for students with intellectual disabilities. This class also utilizes the unique curriculum. Uh, these students also have access to the general education electives with modified assignments and grading. And also the students possibly may have a modified PE class. Physical education is a definitely a big deal at Revere. Revere has a lot of physical education programs and it's really fun. The students really get involved in, in physical education at Revere. So what does it look like? It looks like daily, there's a daily academic requirement for physical education. Uh, students must wear a PE uniform with appropriate fitness shoes as well. Now, as I stated earlier, um, the PE uniforms are on campus and will be sold during registration day. Uh, with physical education, there are team sports, there's individual fitness, and there is running. A lot of, a lot of fun stuff for the kids to do. In addition, um, as kids participate in these different types of team sports and individual fitness, or running um, activities, they have the opportunity to earn superhero incentive t-shirts, which they really love. I believe one is Flash, and I believe Flash is if they run under a certain um, time for the mile. And so as they progress, they get different t-shirts, and they're really cool, and you'll see them wearing them around campus and showing them off. So Revere is a uh, unique school, meaning we have a lot of extra things that we do for our children. And so during lunchtime, we do have lunch clubs. So, and the purpose of these clubs is to get all the kids involved and so they can find some connectedness. Uh, the types of lunch, lunch clubs that we have are chess club, we have a ping pong club, academic decathlon, community service, GSA, horticulture, and circle of friends, and others. We also have a homework help club. This is before school, during lunch, and after school, where if kids need support with their homework, they can um, go to a designated teacher either before, before school, during lunch, or after school, and receive support with their work. Um, we have pride and PTSA for parents to stay involved with the school. We also have after school programs through PEP, Sports Mania, and Summer Bridge. These are after school, summer, and winter sports and enrichment programs. Finally, uh, if you need to call and ask questions, our number is listed. However, email right now is the best, and we will share our emails with you. But the number is 310-917-4800. All of our emails are located on our school website, the Paul Revere website. In our virtual world, we have a current virtual schedule. So this is the schedule that we have as of now. It is a block schedule and it was set to be effective April 13th through June 12th. And the purpose of the block schedule is that we just didn't want to overwhelm our, our students with so much work every day because typically uh, our students would take six classes every day. 
And so Mondays and Wednesdays from 8 to 8.30 are teacher's office hours. And during that time, if your child or if you have any questions, you can definitely Zoom with the teacher to get those questions answered. Also, Monday and Wednesday, they will have periods one, three, and five. Tuesdays and Thursdays, you will have periods two, four, and six. Fridays are teacher's office hours and the students don't have classes on Friday. That will be set aside for things such as teacher professional development, meetings, plannings, or other services. But currently, this is the block schedule that we are uh, utilizing in our virtual um, instruction. So now we have a video for you to watch. Can you turn it up? Ms. Honda, can you increase the volume? I'm sorry. One thing I was nervous about before coming to here is the size of the gym. But instantly I knew my way around and it seemed a lot better. The internet I was nervous about before coming to here was the weather. Once you get started, the weather is super easy and the teachers are really understanding. One thing I was scared about when going to here that I wouldn't have class with any of my friends. I quickly made friends and wanted to class. And so those were some comments from our students um, when they were sixth graders coming to Revere. I know that um, for, some of, for some of our parents, the, the size of the campus can be frightening, but the students seem to follow, find their way around so quickly and so easily. After the second week, they forget all about elementary school. And so, um, Thank you for visiting us. And now we're actually going to open the chat. So if you have questions, we're going to try and answer those questions for you. And if there's something on one of the slides that I wasn't clear on, please do ask. And so, because there are so many people, we'll probably ask if you use the chat feature. It's located at the bottom of the screen. Hi. Right. Okay. Do the IT kids can they choose the elective classes?
appointments already made and uh, the counselors will definitely have their uh, elective classes when they first come in. And then we have something called an elective will. And with that elective will, the students do get to choose their elective classes. Okay. The next question, can you please elaborate on the social skills elective? Um, I think in learning center elective. Well, those are, those are completely different. The learning center elective is for students who are um, in the resource programs. The social skills elective is generally for our students who are in the high functioning autism program. Um, in that program, just to, to clarify, the high functioning autism program, uh, not only are they on the core curriculum and in core classes, they're in general ed classes. Um, so although it's a special day program, um, the students are in all general ed classes, and then they're supported by the high functioning autism teacher in the social skills elective, which functions not only as a social skills, um, elective, but they also work on executive functioning skills and things like that. Um, they do work on um, academics as well as needed. I hope I answered that question. Um, hi, question. Sally. As far as um, Lori, um, I will actually reach out to Lori or I can have Ms. Kraft who is here and she's one of our uh, parent representatives reach out to Lori regarding your um, messages. Thank you. And there's another one here. How do you decide whether a child should be placed in special day versus HFA? <clears throat> I would say if a student for academics needs a smaller setting um, with more one-on-one -on -one attention, so 15, 12, 15 students versus, you know, a general ed class of, of 35, um, that would be a determining factor for me. A student in the HFA program, generally, um, their, their goals are more related to um, social needs, behavioral, executive functioning, things of that nature, and that's academic. And uh, students with social day programs generally have more academic needs. Okay. Where do we find our one-to-one um, -one aid on the first day of school and will we find our be at drop-off? Okay, so I'm not sure if your one-to-one -one aid, um, honestly, they don't always transfer over from elementary school. However, the best place will be in the West driveway behind the auditorium. The west driveway behind the auditorium is typically where we have our student uh, arrive and um, parents can actually bring them in. And that's the direction we do give to our aid. Okay, so this question is um, how uh, do we know how to assign kids to their classroom since um, there are no IEP meetings at this time? Well, I don't know what's happening in fifth grade, but we're holding all of our eighth grade transition IEPs. So I would have hoped that your elementary schools are holding transition IEPs. Um, with that being said, what I do over the summer and spend my summer doing is looking um, in our student information system, uh, any IEPs that I have access to, and looking at all of the IEPs, looking at fake one, which shows what the placement is, um, state two, which shows what services are, and then I work with the counseling office to um, get the schedule, and that is based on the active IP. Okay, this is from Sarah regarding um, social distancing. So we don't know if we're going to be in class uh, come August, so we can't really answer your question because we haven't gotten guidance from the CDC or from our superintendent and board of education. And so as we get that information, we'll definitely share it with you because safety is our number one concern. And so unfortunately, I don't have an answer for that and we're still awaiting information. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Really, um, the curriculum is at large, I'm 
Christian movement having the to generate probably on the alternate curriculum or general curriculum. As far as which programs they're placed in, we don't make that determination initially. Um, you know, my dad recommended them after we did know your students. Um, that's a decision that's made at the transition meeting at the elementary school. They are aware of um, all of the programs that we have here at Revere and meet with the elementary schools in January and provide them with all of our information. So that's really a determination of the IEP team at the elementary school when you're doing the transition. Can't hear you. Nope, I'm not muted. Can't understand. Hmm. Okay, so we have, can you elaborate on what specific learning disabilities are and the type of students? Please, my son has uh, dyslexia and ADD. Well, his class may have similar issues. So a classroom for students with specific learning disabilities, typically um, SLD is an actual eligibility and it encompasses different processing deficits. It can be visual processing deficits or it can be auditory processing deficits. There are children who have ADHD, ADD, and, and dyslexia within that program. And so, uh, to answer your question, yes, there will be, uh, there may be uh, students who are similar to your child. Um, unfortunately, I don't know your child and I don't have a copy of his or her IEP. However, that class does encompass everything that you are uh, speaking of in those classes. I hope that helps. So also, do you provide bus service to students with special needs? Um, Yes, if it is determined necess necessary through an IEP, okay? Transportation through special ed is something that an IEP team determines as necessary. So if you have an incoming sixth, sixth grader in that transition IEP, um, you should have had, or if you haven't had the IEP, you should have a discussion surrounding transportation needs for your child. Okay. I'm going down. Okay. My son was supposed to have a reevaluation at the end of this school year of his IEP since school has been closed. Is there any idea? So, um, unfortunately, anything that requires face to face or person to person contact. It can happen. And so if that means that there is an actual assessment that needs to be completed, then our school psychologists and our teachers cannot do those assessments. Can a meeting be held without the assessment? Possibly. You should speak to your assistant principal at your school over um, IEPs to see what they may uh, support you with with an, a transition IEP. I hope I answered that question too. Um, are there, I think I have everyone's question. Can you guys hear me clearly? Thumbs up. I hope all, thank you. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any more questions? Um, can you please share contact info with Pride? Yes, Gary Kraft is here and she is our Pride contact and she will share with you her, her email right here in chat. Thank you. One more question from Sally, yes. And if anyone else has questions, please do jump in. What is the typical size of an SLD class? Um, they're approximately, and Ms. and Ms. Honda, correct me if I'm wrong, about 10 to 12 kids per class. Mm -hmm. About yep. 10 to 12 is our, our average size per class. I just turned off my video to see if my sound is better. It is. Wow. I haven't had the problem in the IP. Strange. Okay. So I have a question is I have no idea what kind of class my child would need and what kind of class she will be placed in. 
So the class your child will have, hi, and this is to Sally, is based on the IEP that you will have at your elementary school. So you need to have an IEP for the process. Students are placed in classes at Paul Revere based on their IEP. And so please do reach out to your administrator at your school because I cannot give you any information other than what they can give you at this time. Um, Carrie Craft, thank you. It says, my special education experience was great. I always felt that the school was trying to do what was best for my son. And um, I just need you guys to know that we do have some wonderful special education teachers at Paul Revere, and they do work tirelessly to support the needs of our kids. They're very accessible. Um, that's why it's so important that you sign up for Schoology. Schoology is going to be really crucial. So what's normal class sizes? And I'm going to say, Ethan, maybe you're talking about general ed classes. And if so, general education classes, it, it also depends, but they range, I'm going to say approximately 30 to 35 students per class. Yep. If that's what you mean by a normal class size. Um, from Ashley, are there any classes in the special education program mainstreamed into normal class setting? Um, and the answer is yes. Based on the IEP, we always have to follow the IEP. Um, we will place your child in classes that are appropriate. So yes, we do have some kids who may need uh, support in math for special education, but in history, they're mainstreamed into history. Uh, and so it, just, it just depends on the child and we do uh, cater our schedules to support the needs of the kids. Right. So for sixth grade, help, we, we do not have that capability though. Is it any? Can you hear me? Uh, you're going in and out, Ms. Honda. I'm sorry. Wow, I've never had this issue. Um, for sixth grade, we can't do that. Though. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't. I still can't hear you. Oh my God. I'm sorry. So it says. Let me go back. Up. Could you please go over one more the different classes instead? We didn't have the IEP yet, and I would like to talk to them about it. So I'm not. Uh, I can give you a brief. Um, outline so we have core curriculum and we have alternate curriculum core curriculum will be resource the resource specialist program the high functioning autism program and our class for students with specific learning disabilities those are all core program classes and then we have classes for students who are on the alternate curriculum our kids who need a little more support and that would be the Autism Alternate Curriculum Program, and that would also be the um, program for students with intellectual disabilities. Um, if you haven't had your IEP yet, please reach out to your APEIS. They definitely have information regarding our school and what our programs look like, and they should also be able to provide you with some information. If not, they can reach out to myself or Ms. Honda. Is it one teacher per 10 to 12 students in the SLD class or more? Also, do children get any one-to-one? -one? Um, I'm gonna assume that's tutoring for reading as an example. And so in our SLD classes, it is one teacher to approximately 10 to 12 students. Um, as necessary, teachers do pull students aside within the classroom to work on different skills and supports. We do have a, an elective, and in our, our elective there is, um, excuse me, we do have a reading elective. And in that reading elective, the uh, student gets more one-on-one -on -one support for reading. Um, I hope that helps. Uh, Corrine, if the elementary IEP team places my child in an SDC, curriculum that turns out not to be the best fit, does the Paul Revere SDC make a change? 
So in order to make a change, you have to hold another IEP and look at data, which may require assessment. So that's not a straightforward answer, but typically we cannot just change a child out of a program. We have to have an IEP meeting and we may need to do assessments to definitely determine what are the best needs for that child, okay? Uh, Cassandra, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Honda, she said it might be the headset causing the echo. <laughs> um, so are they going to be with general population or separated? Um, Sally, I'm not sure what that means. We don't separate our children. Um, for example, our students on the alternate curriculum uh, do get to integrate into our elective classes and they also get to integrate during lunch and nutrition. And all of our other students also get to take general ed electives and they all have, um, have the nutrition and lunch time together. I hope that answered your question, Sally. So Ethan, my son gets 90 minutes a week um, of services from the IEP in elementary. How is it working in your school? Does he get help in the class? Um, Ethan, I'm going to assume you mean like for the resource specialist program. And yes, our resource program um, is varied and is tailored to the needs of kids. I'm assuming with 90 minutes a week, your child may be in what we call a collaborative setting in which the resource teacher would push into English and math to provide that instruction and support for your child in the general education, English and math classes. You're welcome, Julia. Do I have any more questions? Well, I am going to type my email and it's also on the LAUSD website. And my name is Ms. Anthony, and I am an assistant principal at Paul Revere Middle School. I would give you my phone number, but I'm not at I'm not at work. So if you call it, you wouldn't get me. So if you email me, I'm much more uh, responsive, and I do respond to my emails uh, within uh, 48 hours maximum, maximum. Anyone else? Oh, Ms. Honda, would you like to put your email address? Or I can do it for you. Yes, thank you. Because I'm stuck on a private. Klausine is our special education coordinator. Okay. Okay, and so you have our information. Please do reach out um, for those questions regarding IEPs um, that you may not have had. Schools are holding IEPs. Please reach out to your um, assistant principal who supports the special education program or the coordinator at your school site and um, have those discussions regarding placement as a team and transportation as a team, because those are the two uh, things that uh, kept coming up. And if there are no more, um, where is the email? Did you see it, um, Pinky? I can type the emails again, but they're right here in the chat. Email. You can get it already. And Carrie Craft's email is right above mine. She's our parent liaison. Okay. Well, if you guys have no further questions, I guess that would conclude our meeting. So thank if, I thank you all for coming. We really enjoyed being with you. Let me try the email again, everyone in meeting. Let's try it again.
Did you see that? Got it. Sorry. There we go. My apology. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? You're welcome, everyone. Thank you so much and take care and be safe. We look forward to you. seeing your kiddos. We can't wait. This is so different for us, but we stay hopeful and we stay happy. Just stay happy. <laughs> sorry. Ah. And sorry for any of the technological oh, yeah. drawbacks. Oh my gosh. IEPs two, three times a day and never do. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a wonderful Bye. evening. Thank you guys for coming so much. We so appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time. Bye. Oh, we still have waiting room? Some just popped up. Ashley. No, I'm on video. I got stuck on uh, private. Oh, wow. You're welcome, Julia, for, for um, the information. Um, please reach out if you need more information. Yeah, feel free to to uh, email. Can you hear me now? You're still kind of choppy. Yeah. You're a little bit choppy too. A little choppy. I'm and that's funny because in the beginning you were just great. Yeah, I wonder what happened. I guess just as too many people came on. Not sure. Oh, you're muted. Okay, so I am going to end the meeting. It seems like everyone is pretty much um, out of the meeting. Okay. Yeah, and I don't see any new. And I don't questions. see any new questions. All right. Thanks, Carrie. <laughs> Bye, Carrie. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.